In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today I want to speak about why should we serve and how should we serve. Because there was an old idea in the last 30 or 40 years that the servants of the church are either deacons or Sunday school teachers or few of the people may be uh, busy with the poor people. But actually, according to the Bible teaching and the forefathers teaching, everyone should serve. All the members in the body of Christ should serve. Simply because Christ was the servant. He said it clearly that I came not to be served, but to serve. So looking up to the role model Christ himself, he served the people. He came to serve everyone. He came to wash the feet of his disciples and all the people. So we should follow him. So everyone should serve. Another important point, why should we serve? Because, you know, by service we express our love to God. We love God. He loved us first and he came to save us. And he paid the debt and he went to heaven to prepare the kingdom of heaven to everyone. So uh, we express our love by serving his people. And all the people on earth are beloved by God. So we love people because we love God. And the major expression of love is serving. When you care for people, you serve them. When you tolerate people, you serve them. When you care for their salvation, you teach them, you guide them to the way of God. So when you love God or you love people, you should serve. Another important point, according to the teaching of Christ himself, he made the, the gate of the kingdom of heaven very much related to the works of mercy. When you see a thirsty people, some people who are thirsty, you give them water. When you see poor people and you help them, when you visit the prisoners, when you help anyone in need, now you are the blessed one of God. So you will be invited, called to his kingdom of heaven because you served God through the needy ones. So that's important. Everyone should serve. When I say everyone should serve, I do not mean that everyone should teach. No, teaching is not for all, teaching for teachers. But again, service is for everyone because everyone is called to love. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. So you serve God and you serve people. You serve God by worshiping God, by fasting, praying, spending time in the church, and you serve people in the context of the Bible, to teach them, to help them, to care for them, and to cover their needs. Another important point, why should everyone serve? That I could see that service is the solution of most of the problems in our life. Because when you are busy with people in need, you are getting outside yourself. You are denying yourself. You are forgetting your problems because your mind now is busy with others. So it helps you to live better life, to enjoy life more. Because when you focus on yourself, you are selfish. You are in trouble. You cannot enjoy loving God and loving people. You are not on the right track to heaven. But when you serve people, you deny yourself. So it's the solution of many problems. Uh, the problems of, I could see that some of the marital problems were solved by being busy in service. I could see that the problem of loneliness was solved because of service. When people started to serve, they have lots of people around, but when they uh, stay in their homes feeling loneliness, they are making more troubles for themselves. And also in the atmosphere of service, you will come closer to God. So there is another important point here that in the environment of church services, 
you will learn how to pray better, to study the Bible more, to go regularly for confession and communion, to have good relations with good people. Um, everyone is busy with his salvation. So being in the church service environment, now you are getting closer to God. So we should serve. Also, by serving God, you will get many good virtues like patience, you will learn how to be patient, tolerance, you will tolerate people, understanding and listening because you need to listen to the, to the requests or needs or complaints of people. You will learn how to pray for the people you serve, you will learn wisdom because you need wisdom to, to guide people and when to talk, when you stop talking and, and when you solve problems, you need wisdom. So uh, you will grow in spirit by service because it will teach you lots of things. So that's why we should serve. But how should we serve? Let's go to the Bible and start with this important verse mentioned in the first chapter of the epistle of Colosseum. Him we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Look to this. Warning, teaching in all wisdom to present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. So there are five important words here. Warning, teaching, all wisdom, all men, and each of them will be perfect. So when we speak about Christian service, Christian um, love, we need everyone to be perfect in Christ and we need to reach everyone on earth. So the field of service is very wide because the harvest is plentiful and we need to catch all souls to the kingdom of heaven. Christ was crucified to give his salvation to everyone on earth. So the field of service is very broad and also each one should be perfect in Christ. So it's kind of a horizontal level of service covering everyone and a vertical level to help everyone to be perfect in Christ. So this teaching, warning everyone, each one, and in all wisdom, these are like the five aspects of Christian service. And also in order to change anyone, to give him the transformation gift of God, we need to work on his mind, on his heart or soul, on his body, and lastly, the transformation completed by the change in spirit. So we need to have some message for the mind. We need some message for the heart. We need some message for the body, the will of man. And working on these three, there will be a real transformation for everyone. When we speak about messages to the heart, we like emotional content giving to everyone. We need to express the love of God by our love, by our care. When we care for people, we are extending God's love to them. We are showing them that God loved them because we care. We are ready to help them. We are there for, for covering their needs. So everyone needs to be safe. No, it needs security. So love can offer this security, can cover this need. So while serving people, we are not just uh, giving them sermons, teaching them, filling their mind with the content of the Bible. We need to have this warmth in the church to give them the feeling of security. These people are secured because God loved them and the people of God loved them. And this will help them to overcome their fear because everyone away from God is full of fears. But with the, with the service of love, the service of 
security, they will get rid of the fears. Also, you can see uh, most of the people now uh, suffering from loneliness. And by helping them, by being close to them, by listening to them, by sharing their pains, now you are covering this need. They need someone. They need somebody to, to think of, to share in their life. So that's another important issue. So when I'm telling everyone to serve, I'm not telling you to go and preach or teach. I'm telling you just go and love, go and share, go and help, go and listen to everyone who needs someone to listen to him. Also, you all know that most of the people uh, suffering from low self-esteem, they need to achieve things. And the, the best servant is the one who can help others to find their mission, find their goal in life, find their voice. Because when you don't have any mission in life, you feel valueless, you feel meaningless. But when you help someone to find his voice, now he is happy living because he feels his value, he feels like I'm important, I'm beloved, there are many people needs me. So when we serve people, we open the doors of service to everyone. So pushing everyone to serve. All members of the church should serve. The very young people may serve and the very old people can serve. When we speak about caring, loving, sharing, now it's open for everyone to come and serve. Also, the need of freedom. There is a real need of freedom in the hearts of men. Because it's not about, you know, the suffering of slavery from outside, but the suffering of being prisoned in your mind, in your heart, with the lusts, with bad ideas, with uh, the dark past with the fear of the future so most of the people feeling like imprisoned in their hearts so the word of God the love of God through the servants can help people to be freed to enjoy the freedom given by Christ himself so now we are covering the psychological need the emotional need the heart need of men through sharing through caring through presence, existence in their life and visiting them and touching their pains. So it's not about now the content of teaching. Also, you all know the five languages of love. Most of the servants are ready to express their love with these languages of love. You know, you may love people with gifts. Gifts may not be uh, very expensive, but should be ex expressive. So when you give gifts to people, they feel like important, they feel like beloved. And also another language is the quality time. When you spend time with someone, he feels like you love him. And this means that God loves him and he sends you to him. Also, when we speak about acts or sharing, when you act positively with anyone, when you give your time, your effort, to help someone, he feels like you really love him. Also, um, the touches, the pure touches of father or mother or a friend may help a lot. When you stand beside someone who is suffering, he feels the, the touch of God through you. And also the good words, when you teach one, when you advise people, when you warn them, when you just uh, remind them with some God's promises. Now you are helping to cover their heart needs. When we speak about mental needs, that's another way of serving people. Because everyone needs for his mind to be filled with the knowledge of God. No one is fully knowledgeable. But we all need to know more about God, about heaven, about our mission, about the word of God, about the church history. So when you deliver the message of salvation, you should care for the level of the, of the audience. Are you speaking to children? Are you speaking to servants? Are you speaking to old people? Are you speaking to different minds? So you should be focusing on the content and on the way you deliver the message. 
people need to understand. That's a real mind need to understand things. They need to understand what is the Holy Trinity. How do we believe in one God and also God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit? People need to understand what's heaven, what is the kingdom of heaven? Is it this life only or there is another life and how it looks like? Also, uh, people need to practice what they understood. So you ha help them to practice Christian life because Christianity is not kind of theories or informations or lots of ideas. Christianity is life and you cannot live as Christian without the mind of Christian life. So we need this mind, Christian mind, in order to have this Christian life. So we are helping everyone in the church and every one of you can teach someone a little bit of his knowledge. You may not even deliver only spiritual knowledge, but you may help people to live better with better quality of, of knowledge. In, in Egypt, you all know that we have the problem of illiteracy. So when we teach young mothers to read and write, that's a great step in their life and everyone can help these mothers to read and write. When we help the students in, the, in the schools to, to be good in reading and writing and uh, be excellent in their school practices, they will go to university one day and they will serve the church. So we can add to every one step forward more than he needs. Again, speaking about the mental needs, it's also related to the skills because some people know many things, but when it comes to skillful life, to know how to present the knowledge or deal with others or solve problems, they stuck because they couldn't make it. They couldn't transform the ideas into practice. So we need also to help them how to live these positive ideas and the teaching of the church uh, in daily life. Also, when we speak about service, we speak also about the physical needs. Although we care for the heart need, the mind needs, but we can never forget the physical need, the body needs. The poor people need to eat, need to have clothes. The sick people need medicine, need medical care. So we should, as church people, help people to live better and to cover the needs of their bodies also. The Lord himself, after preaching the sermon for many hours, and he had done many miracles for the sick. With the end of the day, he gave them food. But when they followed him next day just to eat again, he stopped giving food because he is into the, the bread of life. He is into spiritual teaching much more than the physical need because if they follow him just for food, they can never follow him for the kingdom of heaven. Lastly, we speak about the spirit needs. Everyone needs some spiritual needs and most of the people do not know that they need spiritually. They need forgiveness. That's a spiritual need. All people suffer from guilt feeling. They had done great mistakes in their life and they try to forget what they had done. But the feeling of sinful past or this guilt feeling can never let them go happily in their life. But with the gift of forgiveness given by God through the church, you are helping them a lot. When you guide someone to repent and confess in the church, now you are helping him to live better and to catch the kingdom of heaven. So that's the gift of forgiveness. It's a need, a real spiritual need also the need for God's love. Although we all need um, human love, we need sharing, we need families, we need friends, but most of all, we all need God's love, the eternal love, the unlimited love, because people can never 
fill your heart with their love. Maybe your need is much higher, much bigger than they offer. So you need God's love, and that's the word of God. We preach God's love because we cannot fulfill the need of everyone. So that's another spiritual need. Also the need to live forever. It's a real cry in, inside the hearts of men. They no one want to die, no one want to have an end. Everyone wish to live forever. So it's a need. And there is no solution in science or money or, or glory of this world or relations. We need some promise of eternity. We need this faith. So there is a real spiritual need of faith, of belief in eternity, in another life. And that's true. That's the content of church preaching, that we preach eternal life. Also, there is another need of perfectionism. Everyone wants to live ideal, very perfect, but we cannot help us, help it, because we fail to do the perfect uh, model in our life. But with the grace of God, with the teaching of the Bible, with the gifts of the church, now we can go forward into the way of perfection. We will be perfect as God is perfect, with the power of God himself. So, in the atmosphere of service, now we can cover the heart needs, the mind needs, the body needs, and the spirit needs. So, the church offer fasting periods, prayer models, uh, fathers of confession, communion daily, and programs for youth, for young people, for old people. So we have many, many, many kinds of service, but the Holy Spirit is one. God is one, and the goal is one. So we are one body of Christ, having many, many members, living members in the church, and the sign of this living member is to serve his relatives. Glory to God. Amen.